Today we would be preparing copper 2 acetate and we will be doing the Barfoid's test. Copper acetate is prepared by adding copper metal to acetic acid but this reaction takes a very long time and reaction is actually quite absent. If we add a small amount of hydrogen peroxide this process is accelerated. I will first substantiate this one and then we proceed to making the copper acetate and then the Barfoid's test. The materials required include copper metal approximately 4 grams, glacial acetic acid 20 ml and hydrogen peroxide. Here I have taken 2 grams of copper metal in each of the beakers and I am adding 7 ml of glacial acetic acid into each beakers. If you don't have the glacial acetic acid you can use the regular vinegar and Similarly, if you don't have the 30% hydrogen peroxide, you can use the 3% one available in the medical stores. After some time, we will observe for the presence of any reaction in that two beakers. You can see that there is virtually no reaction taking place in both the beakers. The copper metal is seen clear and there is no bubble surfacing or color change or anything in the beakers. Now we will be adding some 30% hydrogen peroxide into one of the beakers and observe the change in the rate of the reaction. On adding the hydrogen peroxide you can see that there is significant amount of bubbling going on in this beaker which means that copper has started to react with the acetic acid and copper acetate has started to form. After a few minutes you can see that there is significant change in color in the beaker in which I added the peroxide which means that peroxide will accelerate the reaction. Now we will continue with the synthesis of copper acetate. I just poured the unreacted acid and the copper into this beaker. Now we have 4 grams of copper metal in 14 to 15 ml glacial acetic acid and hydrogen peroxide. And after few minutes, approximately 10 minutes later, you can see that vigorous reaction is taking place, which means that the protective oxide layer of the copper metal has been degraded and the pure metal is now reacting with the acetic acid in the presence of hydrogen peroxide, releasing a lot of hydrogen gas and copper acetate is being formed. The reaction became so vigorous that I had to change the beaker to a larger one. Now that all the copper has been reacted with the acetic acid, we will boil the contents to reduce the volume and then crystallize out the copper acetate. Here you can see that the crystals have started to appear. Now we will stop the heating and let it to cool to the room temperature and collect the crystals. After cooling, we will filter the solution and collect the crystals. You can see that still a lot of copper acetate is dissolved in the solution owing to its blue color. So we will heat the solution again and recrystallize the crystals from it once more. After filtering, this is what we get. The dark blue colored crystals of copper acetate. Now we will dry the crystals and this is the final product, the beautiful crystals of copper to acetate. Now we proceed to Barfoid's test, a test which is used to distinguish between monosaccharides and disaccharides. The monosaccharide sugars will reduce the copper 2 plus to copper 1 plus and precipitate out the red copric oxide. We start the preparation of Barfoid's reagent by weighing out approximately 1 gram of copper acetate. Transfer the solid copper acetate into a 100 milliliter beaker. Now we will be adding 18 milliliters of distilled water. 
after adding the water to the copper acetate mix to dissolve the salt in water then we boil the content so that more of the salt will get dissolved in it after warming we add 1 ml of glacial acetic acid to the warm solution and mix it here we have the barfoids reagent ready now we will test the sugars we take some barfoids reagent in a test tube approximately 5 ml now we will be taking the sugars first of all i am taking approximately 2 ml of glucose glucose is a monosaccharide and mix it well and we will be keeping it in a water bath in, a, in the similar way we are taking some sucrose solution 2 ml to 5 ml of barfoids reagent and we will be mixing it and we keep these both test tubes in a hot water bath that is a boiling water bath for approximately 3 minutes after placing for 3 minutes in boiling water bath we take out the test tubes on this test tube marked S contains the disaccharide sucrose and you can observe that there is no reaction in this test tube now we take the next test tube which is marked G which means it contains the monosaccharide glucose in it on carefully observing the bottom of the test tube you can see the red color of the cupric oxide deposited on the bottom which means that this solution contains a monosaccharide which we actually already know so this is the test thank you so much for watching my video if you loved the content of this video don't forget to click the subscribe button and also the bell button if you want to get notified about my future new videos